Hey guys, welcome back from Classic Work. I got another good one for y'all today. We've got a, this is a, I think it's a yard and a half. Might be just one yard bucket off a 160 John Deere excavator. And they've done a lot of uh, tree clearing, land clearing with this bucket. And I think this ear right here is bent. If you notice this pin here, it won't fit in this other hole. See, we're almost probably three quarters of an inch off. So what we've got to do is we've got to we've got to take this ear and do a little bit of work to it and make it go just a little bit so this pin will fit in the other side here. So that's the job for today. You can probably see it from right here how crooked it is compared to that one. So yeah, we'll get the old boom truck fired up and I'll unload this dude. Okay, you can see the, the warp in it right there. So the plan is, I've been doing some thinking about this. There's a thousand different ways that you can go about it. You know, if you wanted to, you could sit here with two or three torches and just heat this entire area right here. And you'd have to know exactly where to kind of push and pull I don't even have two rosebuds that I could put on it and I need somebody else to help me too that'd be the, the thing but what we're gonna do I think will be the best solution as you can see I've drew, drew a V right here I'm gonna take a torch and cut an area all the way around this ear and leave some tabs in like say a quarter of an inch so the ear doesn't fall off and we're gonna gouge it out so we got a nice deep V. And then I'll open root this entire ear back on. Um, I'll put the pin in there and make sure it's good and straight. And uh, I'll probably build a, a holder down here so it don't fall through the hole. And periodically we'll take that pin and move it up and down to make sure it'll still move inside the hole. I think that would be our best bet. So take a torch and we'll cut a line where we think the bend is and then I'll go back and I'll V it out with, with the torch as well. You could carbon arc this too if you wanted to. That would, that would be definitely be an option. But I think I can do it a little bit better with the torch. I got more experience with it. And then uh, we'll push this ear down. It probably won't take much. Just take a sledgehammer and hit it a couple of times and get it straight. And you can see how much of the bend is maybe. Uh, let's see here, right, about right there. You see all that gap though? 
you can't see it from where let me get a better image for y'all see if that's any better oh yeah you can see it you can see all the gap that's there so i gotta find the deepest part of the line and kind of trace it out by eye the, the most important thing is getting that pen alignment it doesn't matter if it's a little bit crooked or something like that that's not going to hurt the bucket's performance because it's got these uh, dog bones over here that will help support it so the big thing is getting that pin to align right and making sure that this does not fail so like I said we'll do 100% penetration weld and when I get done the root that I put in I'll do it with a 6010 we'll go back in there with either carbon arc or I'll probably just go in there with a grinder I'll flip the bucket over and we'll uh, we'll put We'll grind out where that where that root is, and grind it out, and go back in there with the 7018 and cap it from the other side. That way, I know without a shadow of a doubt that that's 100% all the way. So it's going to be a lot of cutting and burning getting through this. I'm not going to get done with it today because um, it's spear 30 right now. It's 5:45. I'll get a couple hours in it. We'll, uh, we'll start cutting into this and hopefully get it bent back straight and I'll get a couple of good tacks in it and probably call it a day there. So that's the plan.
All right, this is what we got. So we got roughly, this one here is a little longer than that one. Probably should have measured them out a little bit, but it doesn't matter. So that's our gouges, okay? One of them's got a little bit more gap than the other, but that should be fine. So what I'm gonna do now is take the rosebud and heat just this little area right here. It shouldn't take long to get it pretty, pretty orange. And then we'll take a sledgehammer and hit right here and get this pin to fall. Weight of the pin actually went through it. Let's we'll give it a little tap. That ought to work. Y'all saw how long I had to heat that though. This piece here and all this is absorbing all that heat. That was only like two inches that's holding that. So try to imagine I heat this entire piece. Let's see how they look. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. Still got a little little crook to it, but it's not bad. Alright. We'll clean these grooves up. We should be ready to weld. I got the root put in on this side. We're ready for this side.
worried about the bottom right now because we're going to back gouge. One thing you want to make absolutely sure of is take a hammer and hit that pin. Make sure it's still free. You do not want that thing to bind up on you. Right, guys let me bring you back up to speed a little bit here kind of welded on it until the night and the pin got tight I uh, since I had no bracing on it she pulled back about where she was so I had to back gouge it anyway so I've already gone ahead and back gouged it and laid in you know some good passes there and it was enough to pull it back up right now the pins loose again but it's a good idea weld you on some bracing and then whenever you get done you can just cut it off shine everything all up but pin still moves nice and good now so I got the one side welded up pretty good I'm gonna take a grinder and knock all this back down flat and uh, weld up any any low spots that it may have so I still got to finish welding this one up we should be in good shape. What I'm trying to do is you see this side over here is still low. So you build up more on this side than you do down there. That way you don't get a, a roll in your weld. So I'm gonna continue to build on this side and I'll stop little short runs in here until I get it filled up enough that it'll be flush. So you get the idea.
I got all the braces cut off and got the tack wheels cleaned up. But yeah, it turned out pretty good. She's nice and straight now, if you can see it. A lot better than it was. There's the other side. The most important thing is pin fits. So they should be happy with that. It's still pretty warm, but it's, it's not hot enough. I don't think it's going to deform anymore. It'll cool down and be just right. Now let's load it back onto the trailer there and let her go back to work. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed it and hope you got something out of it. Um, I don't normally do this, but I, you know when you see underappreciated talent, sometimes you 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 want to make make it known. Um, please, if if y'all enjoy this kind of stuff, uh, check out I See Weld on YouTube. He's got his own Instagram page too. His name is uh, Isaac. I can't remember his last name. But a real, real cool dude from from Texas. And uh, if you like, you know, heavy machinery, you know, repairs, like welding repairs and stuff, he's got some really good videos out there showing what he kind of does on a on a daily basis. Um, but he's got some really, really good stuff. Um, he's probably the best person I've ever seen with a gas axe. It. Um, yeah, he, he's done it long enough and knows where to set everything and knows what it's supposed to look like that he makes that stuff look like child's play. It's beautiful what he does with just a stick welder and an arc gouger and a, and a torch, pretty much. Uh, hands down, probably one of the best I've ever seen. So, yeah, if you don't mind, go check him out. I'll put a link in the description where you can find his channel. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. And all, as always, y'all take care and God bless.